Hello, this is an oral history project at Westminster Presbyterian Church. And I am with? Bobby, F Bobby Felder. Bobby, can you uh, tell us where you're from? Well, I'm originally from Tampa, Florida. That's where I went to, I went to school and I, well, my uh, basic education, you know, was in high school and all was Tampa, Florida. Okay. And I left uh, Tampa, Florida and went to Fisk University in Nashville, Tennessee. It's a great school. Where I, yeah, where I uh, majored in music. And when I graduated from, from, um, from Fisk University, I went back to Tampa and became the band director um, at the junior high schools that I had attended oh. earlier. And uh, unfortunately, Fortunately, I was only there for like a year and a half, two years, because I, I was drafted and I was scheduled to go to the Marines back then. That was during the Korean War. And, um, and instead of going to the Marines, I had a little contacts that I didn't want to go into the Marines. I wanted to go into the Air Force because there's a huge Air Force base right there in Tampa, Florida, MacDill Air Force Base. And I was fortunate enough to, to uh, go into the Air Force where they sent me to uh, to San Antonio, Texas, to Lackland Air Force Base for basic training. And uh, uh, I was there for three months in San Antonio. And uh, uh, after my basic training, uh, they assigned you to uh, where you're going to go for your, for your rest of your, I was, I was, I signed up for four years. <laughs> and they, and they, uh, uh, they, uh, uh, after basic training, that's where they decide what school they're going to send you to. And, uh, and the band school for the United States Air Force was also at Lackland Air Force Base, just on the other side of the base. So I just transferred from one side of the base to the other, and I, I went to band school and, uh, uh, at the Air Force Band. And, uh, what instrument did you play? At that, time, at that time, I was playing trombone. Okay. Trombone was... All, well, all through high school and, and, and college and all, I, I played trombone. And uh, my forte with music has really been, uh, all my success has been arranging. Hmm. Yeah, I was a musical arranger for a lot of different bands. And I could take, uh, I could take any CD or LP and, and I, could, I could listen to it and write the chart just, oh, wow. just in, and it would end up sounding just like the record, you know, so I did a lot of that. And so um, in band school, that was quite interesting. I was there for three months. And in the band school, they had a 16-piece uh, a, a dance band hmm. of the musicians in band school that practiced uh, in the evenings. Mm -hmm. And uh, I wrote... I wrote some arrangements. Wait, let me, let me, let me. You can edit this. Okay, out. it happens. I should have. I love the tune. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I forgot to cut this off. Uh, and in, I went to in, in band. I was in band school for three months. Mm -hmm. And what happened? I, I I wrote some arrangements for the band. Mm -hmm. And whoever wrote the arrangements, they let them conduct the band oh, wow. to, to teach them arrangements. And uh, uh, I, wrote, I wrote an arrangement that featured my cell phone on trombone. And uh, what happened, things, good things just ended up happening for me musically because I was w worried about where they were going to send me. Mm -hmm. I didn't, I didn't want to go to Alaska somewhere, you know, and because uh, uh, I'm not a, really a cold weather person. But uh, I... Uh, uh, I wrote some arrangements and I was conducting the band one evening, mm -hmm. doing one of the arrangements that I was, uh, was, I was playing solo on trombone. I think the name of the tune was In My Solitude, I believe, if I can remember, that's been quite a while ago. But um, while I was playing that number, uh, uh, the warrant officer in charge of the band school was named Warrant Officer Ali. Mm -hmm. And he was a very good friend of uh, uh, an, an, officer, an Air Force officer from Washington, D.C., Captain Gall, mm -hmm. who was in charge 
of, of the traveling army band mm -hmm. that travels a lot. This group, just my luck, this group was on tour. And they were on tour just as while I was in band school. And they were in, they were, uh, the, band, the band from, from Washington, D.C., uh, the, the, the marching group, mm -hmm. uh, they, they, it was a group that did a lot of parades and everything mm -hmm. all over the United States. And so I was, uh, I was conducting this number, mm -hmm. and these two officers walked in. Mm -hmm. And I stopped the band, and they said, no, I failed to keep, keep keep playing. They stood in the back for a while, while I was doing, doing the music. And uh, it was Captain Gall from Washington, D.C. and one of us, Ali. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, so I didn't, I didn't think anything else of it. You know, I didn't pay them any mind. Mm -hmm. So what happened, the next morning, mm -hmm. one officer, Ali, called. They woke, some, they woke me up at like 6, 7 o'clock in the morning and told me, one officer, Ali, wanted to see me in his office. I went to Warren Office Alley the next morning, and uh, what happened when I went when I left Tampa, Florida, and went to San Antonio? I had never flown on a plane in my life. Uh, but you're in the Air Force. I, I joined the Air Force. <laughs> okay. But I had never been, a, never on, a been on a plane. <laughs> and and I caught a train from Tampa to San Antonio, Texas. Uh -huh. And uh, uh, so one of, the reason why I'm saying this, one of the first thing he had, asked me, he said, a fella. Uh, have you flown much? I said, no. He said, do you like to fly a lot? Do you like to travel? I said, sure. I said, that's why I joined the Air Force. And he said, he teased me a lot. Mm -hmm. And he eventually said that, that Captain Gall wants you to come to Washington, D.C. with the Air Force Band. Mm -hmm. I said, well, you've got to be kidding. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I, I, I was very excited about, about you know, where I was going to go. Mm -hmm. So coming to Washington, D.C. Was, was really great. So he said, well, I'm going to give you a, 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 a 10 day leave of absence mm -hmm. so you can go home and get yourself together. Mm -hmm. and, and then you get the orders to report to the Air Force Band mm -hmm. in Washington, D.C. So I, got, I, I was so excited, I called my, my mother and all of them in Florida and told them you know, what was going on. So I left San Antonio, mm -hmm. went back to Tampa. Mm -hmm. I, on the train, of course. Mm -hmm. I still hadn't flown. Mm -hmm. and, but then when I uh, came to the Air Force Band in Washington, that was my first, my first airplane flight. Do, do you remember what year this was? When did you first come to D.C.? Oh, uh, wait a minute. I'm, uh, I got to, you know, because I'm going way back. Yeah, I understand. This was the mid-50s. Okay. Yeah, the mid-50s, because I, grad, I graduated from Fisk University in 50, and then I taught two years. So. The, this was mid-50s. 54, 55? Yeah, cause, okay. yeah so, so I, I came back, I flew to Washington, and I, I, I got here the, the evening of Washington, caught a cab, I was stationed at Bowling Air Force Base, mm -hmm. right here in D.C., mm -hmm. and with the in, in Air Force Band Squadron. And uh, uh, the, 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 the group that I was to be with had their own barracks, two barracks and everything. Mm -hmm. And uh, so when I got here, Captain Gall called me in his office and said, Phil, I'm going to uh, put you in a room by yourself. Because I was lucky because they were, they were living two to a room. Mm -hmm. But I had a room by myself. And he said, I'm going to put a piano in there for you. And I want you to start a writing music for this group, you know, start arranging. And so that's when I started my, 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 my uh, uh, living in D.C. was started right at that point. I was at Bowling Avenue. So I was at Bowling Air Force Base for three and a half years with the, with the uh, Air Force Band. And, and fortunately, I got a, got a chance to travel all over the world. With, with, you know, I went to France, I mean, England, Scotland, all those places, you know. Sure. And, we, and we did uh, all of, like all the major, uh, a lot of state fairs in, in this country. We performed a lot of football games, mm -hmm. you know, parades, you know. Mm -hmm. so, so we were traveling out of out of Bowling Apples Base, like like every other week we were flying somewhere oh, to, wow. to perform. So what happened when I uh, uh, got in my room with the piano? Mm -hmm. I I do my best at nighttime, mm -hmm. like all arrangements that I even do now. I I, I never 
started until about 11 or 12 o'clock in night. And, 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 and I get started in some music when I'm writing, and I end up writing until 4 or 5 o'clock in the morning, you know. So I seem like I think about it at night like that. So every night is when I would sit down at the piano and start doing some arrangements. Mm -hmm. And I did quite a few arrangements for the band. I had it done about six or seven arrangements for this group in Washington. Mm -hmm. So there were, there were two fellows that became very good friends of mine. Uh, uh, George Falknana, from, he, he was from New Jersey and Ed Seifer was from uh, Pennsylvania somewhere. Mm -hmm. They became good friends of mine. He was these, well, well. First of all, there were there were like 80, 80 90 pieces in the band, and band. out of the ninety in the marching band, there were only six blacks in the band. And uh, uh, these two uh, uh, fellows that became our very close friends, the white guy mm -hmm. fellows, and they knew what I was doing writing the music because they'd come by my room all the time. So every morning at 10 o'clock, we would, we would rehearse indoors mm -hmm. to go through music and everything. And then like at one o'clock, we would go outside on the parade grounds at Bowling Apple Base mm -hmm. and practice. So one morning I was sitting and in, in, in playing in the group. Mm -hmm. Captain Gall walked in and, and right at the end of our rehearsal, he said, no, I want, you, I want everybody to stay here. Mm -hmm. He said, Phil, I understand you've written some arrangements. I said, yeah. He said, well, go get them. Well, where we rehearsed was right next door to the barracks where we stayed. Mm -hmm. I, went, I, I went and got a couple of the arrangements mm -hmm. and bought them back. He said, uh, the conductor of the band at that time was a guy who had, who had graduated from Oklahoma, Uni Oklahoma State University. Uh, 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 Sig Norman was his name. And, and, and he was the conductor of the band at that time. And uh, so I gave the arrangement to him. Captain Gall said, "No, I want you to, I want you to take them, take the group through the band arrangements." So I went through the arrangements, which they liked very much. And starting at that time, every time we would we we, we would go out and perform, we would we would do a uh, uh, a marching performance first in the daytime, and then that night we would do an indoor concert. So uh, 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 my arrangements is one where they would play most of the, uh, the concerts. So they end up, at the first concert out of town we played, they did one or two of my arrangements. So they, they eventually mm -hmm. got to the part, part where the whole, almost the whole, whole concert that we did was, was the arrangements that I had played. So we were traveling, so, so, so just how luck is, falls my way. Sig Norman had a physical problem. Mm -hmm. What he called, what he, called he, had, he was a real thin guy, but he had, he had like what they call water on his knees or something like that. And his knees would swell up real big where he couldn't walk or anything. And we were scheduled, we were scheduled to go on, go, go on a tour. Mm -hmm. of, uh, and, and the tour including going back to San Antonio, Texas mm -hmm. to perform where I had come from. Come from. And, uh, 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 and we we left there. We we, we flew to, from there to Wichita, Kansas, to the air base there, mm -hmm. and we flew all the way to to uh, Albuquerque, New Mexico, mm -hmm. for a performance there. I never forget. So we were going we were going for about like a, like a week and a half. So so he said they woke me up again this morning. Captain Gall wants to see you in the office. And we were scheduled to leave the next morning, fly out of Bowling Apples Base. So I went through this teasing again. Mm -hmm. Captain Gall said, uh, fellow, we're leaving in the morning, Van, you know. Sig is in the hospital. Mm -hmm. So you're gonna have to conduct the band mm -hmm. on, on this tour to do the conducting. Mm -hmm. And, and I, it was, of course I accepted that. Mm -hmm. So I went on the, I started conducting the band on the, on this tour. Now, another thing that, that, that uh, what I liked about Captain Gall, he pushed me all the way up rank rise. When I got to Bowling Air Force because I was, I was a private at one strike. Mm -hmm. I skipped the sergeant and everything. He automatically gave me a staff sergeant with mm -hmm. four stripes. 
by time, but in the next, after two years, I had gone all the way up to senior master, master sergeant, as high as you can go as an enlisted man. Mm -hmm. So I was very young, and I was like in my 20s then, and, and I had stripes. Oh, you know, when you got all, yeah. my whole shoulder was stripes, you know. And, and, and uh, 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 I went on this tour. So after that, Sig Norman uh, uh, never conducted anymore. I, I did the conducting from, from that point on. Mm -hmm. We got a chance to uh, to travel all over. Uh, I, I got a chance to do a lot of traveling with the, with that band, and uh, um, I uh, um, one of one of my most interesting tours. We we would always fly out Andrews Air Force Base because mm -hmm. that's where your overseas flights were from, mm -hmm. and because we had to go through customs and everything. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, another good thing that happened to, to me during that time, there was a big Air Force base in Bermuda. And, and they, Bermuda, they did not have a, a music group, a band, military band on that base. And uh, so we used to fly to Bermuda like every six months to do the, to do the big base parade and, and you know, Parade and view and all that stuff. So, so I got to go to Bermuda, fly to Bermuda about six or seven times. And uh, uh, what I did with with the band is uh, there were, there were some guys in the band that were good jazz musicians, mm -hmm. and we we performed uh, 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 from within the band. We performed about an eight piece combo. Yeah. And so, so I, I, I'm always thinking about making money. So, mm -hmm. what we, everywhere we we would perform. The band would travel to. Uh, I would contact the NCO clubs mm -hmm. and the officers club mm -hmm. to try to book us on an engagement. And, and so that I was lucky with that, so I, I could make a little extra money on the side. Yeah. So there was an officers club in Bermuda. It was a fabulous officers club. Mm -hmm. Every time we would go to Bermuda, we would perform at the officers club mm -hmm. at night. So why I'm saying all that is, is that. That when I was discharged, mm -hmm. when I when I decided to get my discharge, mm -hmm. uh, I, the the people in Bermuda contacted me, and uh, I took 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 a band, a jazz band from Washington to Bermuda for three months. Ooh. We we performed. They they rented two houses for us, and uh, uh, what I got to tell you, this is very important. Uh, there were there were. Uh, it was a six-piece group, I think mm -hmm. it was. I'm trying to remember, but there were five pieces, mm -hmm. and this this female singer, mm -hmm. and and and, and you, you probably you're gonna be shocked when I tell you the female singer was. She played piano at all. It was Shirley Horn. Oh my gosh! I don't know if you've heard of Shirley of Horn. Of course I have. Yeah, course. which is the great Shirley Horn. Well, Shirley Horn went with us on this tour for three months. For wow. three months, so I, we were with Shirley for three months. And that was a I fabulous, day. yeah, we, we enjoyed that. So, so what happened, and I stayed in Bermuda three months, and when I came back, mm -hmm. uh, I'd been discharged, of course. When mm -hmm. I came back uh, is, is when I uh, uh, applied uh, to D.C. public school system okay. for, for a job, you know, mm -hmm. as band director. And uh, I, 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 can, I can tell you one thing. When, uh, uh, I, I decided I wanted to get my master's degree mm -hmm. at that time. Do you remember what year or what friend? So this is the uh, early 60s? Yes. Okay. And, and, and what happened uh, 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 to get my, to get, I, I, I was fortunate enough to get a job at Kelly Miller Junior High School okay. as band director. Yep. Which I was, I was there for like, Ten years, so then I, mid sixties to early seventies. Yeah, then I went left there with the Roosevelt High School for for, for, for a year. Went to uh, I left there and uh, well I can get to get into that after a while. Okay. But but uh, uh, what happened when I uh, uh, this decided to to uh, get get a job go get my master's. I'm sorry, when I decided to get my master's degree, I. I still have my uniform and everything mm -hmm. from the Air Force Band. I put on my uniform and all. Mm -hmm. Went up to Howard University. Mm 
uh, and, and, and talked to the head of Howard University's music department mm -hmm. about enrolling for a master's degree. Mm -hmm. Who was running, do you know who was running the department at the time? Oh, uh, my mind, no. No, it's, it's okay, it'll come back. I, I'll think of it, he's well known too. Yeah, that's. Uh, uh, the head of the music department at Howard University, Warner Lawson. Yes. Yeah, that's who it was. Yeah. And uh, uh, he sat down with me and told me that that Howard University, the academics were so high mm -hmm. that I would have to take a year. And I had finished uni Fish University. I had had to take a year of some academic courses before I can enroll for a master's degree. I was disappointed in that. Uh -huh. I got in my car, left Catholic University, I mean, left uh, Howard University, uh -huh. drove over to Catholic University. Uh-huh. And showed the difference. I walked in Catholic University and, and, and told a lady I was interested in, in enrolling uh -huh. to get my master's degree. And uh, uh, at that time, the head of the music department, this was like, like maybe one o'clock in the evening, mm -hmm. 12 or one o'clock. Mm -hmm. The head of the music department at Catholic University happened to come in, into the mm -hmm. office where, 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 I, where I was. Mm -hmm. And I told him what I wanted to do and everything. And I had my uniform and all mm -hmm. on. And he said, he felt, he said, well, I tell you what, he said, have you eaten lunch yet? Mm -hmm. I said, no. He said, well, come on, go, I'm going to lunch. Come on, go to lunch with me. So the head of the music department took me to lunch. And we sat there and talked and talked. And he asked me about all my experiences in mm -hmm. the Apple's band. And when we walked back to the Catholic University Music Department, he told the girl, he said, give him all of his papers to let him enroll right now, you know. So I was very lucky with that. I, I enrolled in Catholic, and so I, I was there for two years, and I got my master's. Man, got your master's. I got my master's from Catholic University, which was a very, 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 very good experience. Sure it was. Know? Yeah. You, if you don't mind, can we go back? You, you've talked about a lot, and, and, and I love it, but your, your early upbringing, your family, who taught you how to play the trombone? Well, well, how did you learn the trombone? Well, I, I back was the way that I, I, I started playing trombone. My brother, uh, who was athletic, was Billy Felder, was a, a famous, very good football player. He played quarterback at the high school, and he he played the trombone. Okay. And, and uh, uh, he, gave his, he gave the trombone up for athletics. So the trouble was just laying around the house. So you picked it up? So that's why I, I just picked it up. Matter of fact, my, my first trombone, this is embarrassing. My first trombone, I didn't even have a case. Oh, I used, I used, you got the slide and, 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 and the horn, uh -huh. the, the, the part. And uh, uh, I used to walk around with the horn with no case, you know, <laughs> until I was able to get a decent trombone. I but I started, that's how I started on, on, okay. on, on trombone. How many brothers and sisters did you have growing up? Well, that's another story there. Uh, okay. I had 11 brothers and sisters. Ooh, it's a big family. And I'm the only one left. They're all gone. Oh, and uh, uh, eight boys, four girls. Four girls. And uh, uh, so I've been to a lot of funerals. The mother, father, and uncles and all, and 11 brothers and sisters. Well, you know. the good thing is a lot of grandkids now. I'm yeah, sure, yeah, right? yeah. So, so I have a lot of uh, uh, nieces, nieces and nephews. And nephews. And yeah, now that uh, uh, that are still in Tampa, Florida. Okay. I, st I, st I have a home and also have a house in Florida, Tampa. So I, I still go down there quite often okay. whenever yeah. I get a chance, okay. you know, yeah. to visit my my niece and nephews, you know. And they all love the Uncle Bobby, you know, so. <laughs> Of course. Yeah, so, so I look forward to that. Yeah. yeah. So mid-60s, you're in D.C. Can you d describe your, your first uh, experience in D.C.? You, you were working at the Air Force Base, right? So. Yeah, yeah, well, well, well I, when I, I came out of Air Force, got the job as band director at Kelly Miller Junior High School, yep. uh, I, start, I started a jazz group that played... Uh, 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 different little clubs around Washington. Can you and, name the clubs? Do you remember what clubs you were playing back then? Oh wow! Was it U Street? Was U Street? Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. I, I did all the clubs okay. on U. I played all the clubs. Bohemian Caverns. I, I yeah, was yeah, one of them. yeah. Bohemian Caverns. I played uh, uh, the, the one out on uh, uh, Jim McPhail's place. I, hmm. I, he had, you know, Jim McPhail had a nightclub. I played there mm -hmm. quite, a, quite often, and then. Uh, Oh, 
I, I'd like to tell you a little bit about about, about Jim McPhail. So oh, sure, my, uh, my associate you know, with him. You know, he was a well-known musician here too. He was he was one of the musicians with uh, Duke Ellington, and uh, he was also a teacher at Eastern High at, uh, at not the junior high school over uh, Eastern High School is. Yes. And uh, but I, I started a, a, a dance group. And, uh, I'm sorry, uh, you started a dance group too? Yeah, I, well, th that's when I, because again, uh, you like money. <laughs> well, 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 I was heavy into jazz at that time uh -huh. on my trombone. And uh, one of my best experiences that I had as a jazz musician was uh, uh, I was called by Charlie Bird, the guitarist, mm -hmm. well known guitarist in mm -hmm. Washington, to. Uh, to do his, to to perform with, with his group, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, that was a fabulous group. It was a five-piece group, mm -hmm. and uh, we did his first song, uh, first album was Jazz at the Showboat Volume One. Mm -hmm. It's still available now if you mm -hmm. go online. Mm -hmm. And uh, on that song, I five of the songs were my arrangements that, wow. that I the originals that I did uh, for Charlie Bird. And at that time, he had uh, uh, he had piano, bass, drums, mm -hmm. uh, uh, me on trombone, mm -hmm. uh, Buck Hill, mm -hmm. who is another well-known saxophone, course. Buck Hill on tenor saxophone. The great Buck Hill from yeah, yeah. So Buck, Buck, Buck Hill was it was two two the trombone tenor combination, okay. and Charlie Charlie Bird, and. Uh, uh, we we performed. Oh, for well, I, I was with Charlie about a year, and we and I performed uh, while I was a band leader. Kelly Miller, I performed uh, six nights a week at the Showboat up on up on uh, Connecticut Avenue, and uh, that was quite an experience. Uh, 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 Charlie Bird, every night Charlie Bird would do a set by himself on on on, on a classical guitar. And then he would get his electric guitar and do do the the rest of the night with with our jazz group, you know, and uh, uh, that that was quite quite a good experience, you know. So from that point, I didn't want to because I was teaching school, mm -hmm. getting my masters at mm -hmm. Catholic Union in the evenings, mm -hmm. and playing six nights a week, and that was just a little too much. Mm -hmm. So I, I as I said. I always looked at my music as a business mm -hmm. to make money, mm -hmm. and I uh, 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 decided that I could play dances on weekends mm -hmm. and make as much money as I could playing six nights a week. Mm -hmm. So that's when I, I formed my dance band, and I named it, it was Bobby Feller and, and the Blue Notes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, 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 now in forming a dance band, another experience I had. Mm -hmm. I switched over to uh, from trombone mm -hmm. to keyboards because we were playing rhythm and blues mostly uh -huh. during that time. And you knew how to play the piano. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 and I had basic knowledge of keyboard and all. Mm -hmm. So what I did, I went out and, and, and bought me a, a small Hammond organ. Mm -hmm. At that time, I was living at the, uh, at the Rhode Island Plaza, which was a well-known mm -hmm. apartment building on mm -hmm. Rhode Island Avenue. Mm -hmm. It's torn down now, mm -hmm. but uh, I, I, I took that small uh, Hammond organ and, and 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 put it in my living room, mm -hmm. and and I would come in from school every day and practice, practice, practice. Mm -hmm. There was a bass player who also lived in the building there, named Zell Sloan. He's passed now, mm -hmm. and so I, I I got him to come practice, start practicing. Mm -hmm. So we learned all we we, we learned a lot of songs. Mm -hmm. you know? So that's where Jimmy McPhail came in. Mm -hmm. So Jimmy knew about uh, about what I was doing and the dance man I had. Mm -hmm. And uh, 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 Jimmy asked me, uh, during the summers when I was not teaching school, I would usually go to Florida. Mm -hmm. but, but, but this particular summer, Jimmy McPhail approached me about playing three nights a week, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. At his at his, yeah, his, club. his club on on, on Blainsbury Road, okay. yeah. So so he said uh, uh, at that time 
I had started the group with me playing Hammond organ. Mm -hmm. And uh, 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 I, I had a, uh, um, I took in the Jimmy's place, I took uh, organ, bass, drums, mm -hmm. and saxophone, mm -hmm. a saxophone player. Hershey McGinnis was a saxophone player. And uh, at that time, Jimmy had, had, had did a big show every night. Mm -hmm. And where he had, he had these four lady dancers. Mm -hmm. And then, a comedian, of course, and then at the end of the night, he would, Jimmy McPhail was a very good vocalist, and he would come in and sing. Mm -hmm. This is where I, they say you learn under pressure. Mm -hmm. Jimmy McPhail would give me the keys of the songs that he was doing, and I would go home and practice them mm -hmm. over and over and over. But then, Jimmy McPhail was something. Jimmy McPhail, sometimes, let me give you an example. Mm -hmm. Phil said the song was in E flat, mm -hmm. and I had practiced it in E flat. Mm -hmm. Jimmy McPhail, when he, when he came on, he would just come in and start singing. And sometimes he would be an E natural. Oh, there you go. And I had learned the song in E flat. <laughs> so you can imagine what kind of pressure. So, so sometimes. Toes. Yeah, yeah, he just, he just pick up the. Pick up the uh, uh, mic and start singing. Yeah, not let me give him the introduction to give him the right key and everything. And so he put me, so from, from that point on, I had to learn the songs in maybe two or three different keys uh, close to the key that he normally would do them in. So, so that was that was quite an experience, you know. And, and uh, so I was, I was, a Jim, I, I stayed with Jimmy McPhail, oh wow, for, for a couple of years. Wow. I just played Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Then I start. Then I start performing a lot for the social clubs, mm -hmm. uh, the, fr social, the, the fraternities, sororities. Can you talk more about that? So the fraternities in D.C. So at oh, Howard yeah. or yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the fraternities in D.C. If I'm not it, correct, back then many of them had houses, right? So they had yeah, fraternity right, houses. right, right. Well, no, but 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 all the fraternities, the fraternities, the uh, uh, the uh, uh, sororities, the sororities, fraternities. And the uh, alumni associations and all, the Masonic groups and all, sure. Eastern Star, all those, yep. everybody at that time back then in Washington, all of them have dances every year. Oh, yeah. Most of them have, have, a, have a fall dance and a spring dance. Mm -hmm. And uh, 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 one of my, my, my biggest break with my dance band was when um, uh, the Omegas, the Omega Sci Fi fraternity. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, at that time, they had their dances every year. Mm -hmm. The spring dance at the uh, DC Armory. Okay. They had like like five thousand people. Huge. Sure. Five thousand people, you know. And uh, this particular year, the Omegas had a uh, uh, Count Basie, Count, Howard Count Basie, wow. as the feature attraction uh -huh. for the Mardi Gras. Mm -hmm. And they needed a band to play Count Basie's breaks. Mm -hmm. They needed just a small group, mm -hmm. so they called me. So it was. I played opposite count. Oh, look at that. I, yeah, I was really nervous. Yeah, but I played. But but uh, uh, when Count Basie played, the place was packed up around the, 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 to see the big band. Yeah, of course. But when I played, the dance floor was like that. Because <laughs> I played dance music, you know, and uh, that's how I got my break. So from that point on, every year, I played the Omega Mardi Gras for I know 20 years. I, 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 I did that, uh, the Kappas, uh, the Kappas, I, I did uh, a lot of the Alpha dances, I did mm -hmm. the, the Deltas, did AKs Beautiful. dances and all. Uh, not only here, but I, I uh, uh, traveled the East Coast quite often with my dance band. Uh, I uh, 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 performed a lot in Baltimore, a lot, as, by as much as in Washington. Philadelphia, New sure. York, you sure. know, even we performed uh, even for the Shriners every year. We performed in Detroit one year, in Chicago another year. Oh, wow. one, of my, one of my highlights of, of, of my dance band traveling was a, a, a friend of mine had a, had a big travel agency in New York. Mm -hmm. and, and every year he did a jazz cruise out of New York. Mm -hmm. And uh, 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 where, where, where he would have about five or six, uh, pardon, about five or six bands play on this ship. The ship would go out Friday, mm -hmm. 
-hmm. and come, come, back, come back into New York on Monday mornings. So I did that cruise for, for about four straight years. And, but my part of the cruise was, he had all the jazz groups give performances up until 11 o'clock. Mm -hmm. and, then, and, and then at 12 o'clock, I played from, from 12 to 2 every night. Yeah, so you were the for dancing. Dan for dancing, yeah. <laughs> On the ship, yeah, from for, for 12 to 2. And so that was a good, uh, 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 that was a good uh, uh, experience for me. Sure. We went to New York and we performed, uh, I, I say for about three years, and uh, with, uh, uh, with uh, I'm trying to remember a lot of, a lot of great jazz, jazz uh, musicians. He also had, I know, I know on, on one of the cruises I performed opposite Harold Melvin Blue Notes. Mm -hmm. um, the organ player, um, I can't think of the well-known organ player, uh, but but the but he had like well-known groups on, on those cruises, sure, you know. Sure, sure. And, and uh, so that was that was a good experience for mm -hmm. me, also, you know. Mm -hmm. But uh, since that time, uh, uh, my forte was really playing cabarets mm -hmm. and, and all in Washington D.C. Yeah, yeah. Now, e education-wise, I've been a a teacher all my life. Okay. Uh, I uh, 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 I was a band director at a uh, Kelly Miller Junior High School mm -hmm. for ten years, and uh, uh, another brick came my way. The principal and I were very very close. Miss Mule Alexander was her name, and uh, there was an opening for a band director. Uh, the band director at Roosevelt High School mm -hmm. had moved up to uh, to head of music for the whole district, you know. Mm -hmm. So there was a band director opening. I knew the principal real well, Maxwell Honeyman. I knew him real well, who was the principal, at because uh, he had been to a lot of my affairs now. Mm -hmm. He called me and asked me the, the, would, would I accept the band director at Roosevelt High School. Mm -hmm. And uh, from from uh, I was so uh, so involved in Kelly Miller Junior High School. I really didn't want to move, but but Ms. Alexander said, "Phil, it's time for you to move up." You know, so I left there, Kelly Miller, and went to Roosevelt High School for one year. That was the transition. Yeah, I was only show you how things start moving for me. I was only at Roosevelt High School for one year. Uh -huh. I'll never forget at Roosevelt High School when I got there. The fellow had a string ensemble at Roosevelt High School. When I got to Roosevelt High School, I, I, I put together a marching band and a concert band that was very, very good. Mm -hmm. So I'll never forget uh, 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 my first performance at, at Roosevelt High School. Uh, they, had, they, 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 had a, they had what they called Military Day, where they, they brought all these officers all these officials from the mm -hmm. Army, Air Force, Navy, mm -hmm. and all to Roosevelt. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, I had, uh, I'll never forget this. They told me to do the introduction mm -hmm. to the, the assembly, to the assembly, where all the students were, mm -hmm. the assembly was packed. Mm -hmm. So I put together uh, 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 four guys mm -hmm. for the flags. They mm -hmm. did, the American flag, the DC flag, mm -hmm. Roosevelt flag, and all. I put together a, a, a march a group, mm -hmm. and, uh, and 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 I and I did the Star Spangled Banner. I mm -hmm. had my band to do my arrangement of the Star Spangled Banner. Mm -hmm. Well, at Roosevelt High School, there was a stage, and, and the band sat down in the, in the pits. Mm -hmm. They had down in the band. Mm -hmm. At that day. Auditorium packed, all these officers and all on the stage. They turned to me to start the program. <laughs> I had my uh, uh, the, the, the full uh, guys, uh -huh. the full bearers in the back with the flags. Uh -huh. To uh, um, we had practiced all this. Yeah, so they marched out. My drummer started started a drum roll, yeah. and 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 uh, you heard them all in the back. Hut, forward march, you know, <laughs> and they marched down real good, through the aisle, uh -huh. to the front of the auditorium, turned around, and they lowered the flags, they raised the American flag. Uh -huh. 
I went right into the Star Spangled Banner. Mm -hmm. I'll never forget. After the Star Spangled Banner, I got a standing room, standing ovation. Standing ovation for the yeah, show. for the Star Spangled, <laughs> for the Star Spangled, for the Star Spangled Banner. So that's how I got my start. I'll yeah, never forget that. I, I I got my start at Roosevelt. Yeah, so Roosevelt. I was at Roosevelt. So what 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 happened? Uh, uh, I was also uh, uh, good friends of the head of uh, uh, president of D.C. Teachers College, mm -hmm. Paul Cook, mm -hmm. and, uh, uh, and te teachers colleges across from Howard University. From right across, right across, right across, yeah, yeah. So uh, uh, the 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 lady who teaches, uh, I'm trying to think of a name, who was uh, who taught music appreciation and all uh, at at D.C. Teachers College, mm -hmm. asked me to bring an ensemble. To DC, DC Teachers College mm -hmm. to, uh, uh, to, to do demonstration on instruments, mm -hmm. strings, wood. Mm -hmm. So I put together about a 12 piece ensemble. Mm -hmm. She had all of her music appreciation classes come in. And I, and I went to DC Teachers College and I did a performance there. Mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Cook came in and heard. The next day he called me and offered me a position at, yeah, at, at DC Teachers College. So that was another move up. Yeah. I, I was reluctant to take that. So he said, "Bob, you have to." Work. I said, "Well, I never taught college anything." He said, "Well, he, he says it's really easy. Say once you get into it, so you you will like it, you know." So I left Roosevelt. I was on the Roosevelt one year. Mm -hmm. Left there and went to uh, DC Teachers College. At, I was at DC Teachers College mm -hmm. for a year. Put together a small little concert band and everything. And uh, lo and behold, this is when Federal City College started. Mm -hmm. And at that, t at that time, it was called Federal City yeah, College. I was say Federal City, sure. Back then. Yeah, yeah. And uh, uh, they, when they started, started the music, the music department with only two people, Hildred Roach and Bill Moore. Okay. Hildred Roach was a pianist, mm -hmm. and Bill Moore was, was a, a vocalist and pianist. Mm -hmm. he was, so uh, what happened? Hilda Roach, who's, who also had a music appreciation class at DCT, called, called me for the same thing. <laughs> Would I come down and do a demonstration uh -huh. of instruments and all to her, all of her music appreciation class? I, went, I took a group from DC Teachers College mm -hmm. to, to uh, Federal City College, mm -hmm. did a huge concert with all of her classes, mm -hmm. and then after that point is, 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 is when uh, the guy who was in charge of fine arts, mm -hmm. Offered me a position there <laughs> at, at Federal City College, so I was only at DC Teachers College a year. A year before you yeah. had another offer. Yeah, so I left there and I went to Federal City College, and and, and I was the third person they hired in the music department. It was Bill Moore, Hill Roach. Then they hired me as as head of the instrumental department at at, uh, mm -hmm. at D. So I was at uh, UD. Then, then of course it became UD, came to UDC. Yeah. Okay. And we moved up. We moved up to the Van Ness campus mm -hmm. up on Connecticut Avenue. Mm -hmm. Do you remember when you made that transition? Oh wow! Was that the early '80s or? I think so? I'm, I'm guessing now. I think Federal City College started around '69, mm -hmm. 1969. I think it was '69, '70. Okay. During that time. Okay. But I was at. I went to. Went to UDC, uh, University of Columbia, and I. Uh, I taught that for 23 years. Oh, wow. Okay. So you retired from Yeah, yeah, yeah. I retired. I retired way back in 92, you know, I retired from then. Mm -hmm. and, uh, uh, and, and, and I just pursued my musical career with, the, with mostly performance then, mm -hmm. from that point on, you know. Okay. So up, up to where I am now, you know, I, uh, I, I, I hope I can have told you a little lot about what I've done. Oh, you have, uh, you have, and I have a, a few questions. If, if you yeah, don't yeah, mind. go ahead. Sure, go ahead. sure. Can we talk about your family? So, when did you meet your wife, and or, or are you married? Do you have any kids? Yeah, no, well, well, it's, 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 well right, right, that, that. I don't want to assume. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, I have, well, I have a son. I met Laverne. Uh, I don't, don't know what year it was, but uh, we have, we have one son, okay. Ronald. You know who. Who was, uh, I don't know what I do, what could, how, how I could do without him now. He has all of my equipment and all when I perform and everything. And he, Beautiful. He, yeah, he's, he's like your road manager, yeah, your roadie. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. 
and he does all the logistics for me and everything, right, you know. Wonderful. So I depend on him quite a bit for, okay. you know, for the success of my music, you okay. know. And, but that's the only that's the only son I, okay. that I have. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Can we talk about uh, you living in D.C. in the '60s and '70s, right? So D.C. changed a lot, right? Went through some transitions. Yeah, it, 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 it went through quite a few transitions because I, uh, my, when I got out of the Air Force. Uh, and got a job at Kelly Miller Junior High School. I got my first, uh, my first uh, uh, apartment. It was at the Rhode Island Plaza Avenue Apartments. Now, now at the Rhode Island Plaza Apartments, mm -hmm. they had a, 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 a on the first floor. They had a, a they had a jazz jazz club, jazz club. Wow. called the Spotlight Room. Oh, look at that! Yeah, and uh, uh, so I went in. I was lucky enough. I was, that's when I was playing trombone then. Just come on downstairs. <laughs> yeah. I, I played there for, uh, 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 oh wow, I know for four or five years. Yeah, I, was I played there like four or five nights a week. I was in the spotlight room. Mm -hmm. And uh, 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 they used to bring name jazz in uh, for some weeks when I didn't perform there. Mm -hmm. And one of my good experiences there, one of my close friends, uh, they bought Cannonball Adderley oh, wow. and, his, and, his, and his brother, Matt Adderley, in for a week. And, and, and we became friends because I knew them in Florida because sure. they, they're from Florida. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay. Yeah, yeah. They, they're from Lakeland, Florida. I'm from Tampa. Lakeland is just 30 miles from Tampa. Okay. And uh, uh, Cannonball came in. I, I was living on the seventh floor. Mm -hmm. And they stayed with me. Oh, look at that. Cannonball and that. And that's The week that they were there. And, uh, uh, uh the odd thing about Cannonball and that, the whole week that they were in my apartment, uh -huh. their horns were never in the case. Oh, look at that. <laughs> I mean, they would sit down talking like you and I be talking. Yeah, and they had the horns. And they have the horns, and they just start playing different things, yeah, different, put uh, together different songs, you know. Love it. And they, they, and that's what you call a musician 24-7. Fair enough. Yeah, so that was a very, 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 very good experience. You know, Cannonball was also a very good cook, and I ate real good that week. Uh, can that imagine. week that he was there, yeah. yeah fair enough. But that was a good experience. But, but, uh, I played with a lot of good musicians. Now, up until now, uh, uh, what I have uh, uh, now is uh, uh, an eight piece. Eight piece band? Eight, eight piece jazz group. Okay. And a. Uh, 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 the, the jazz group. Well, well, let me go. Let me go back mm -hmm. again. And tell you another experience that I have to tell you. I uh, uh, I start. I, I play in churches a lot now. Mm -hmm. there are, a lot of the churches are, are having what they call jazz gospel jazz gospel services mm -hmm. on Sunday, mm -hmm. where they do uh, so many times a year. You know. Sure. And uh, uh, I I got a call. Hilda Roach again, which is my good friend, uh, was a member of People's Congregation Church up on 13th Street. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, Reverend Stanley, Reverend Knight and Stanley, was, was a well-known minister in, 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 in all ministerial circles all over the United States, but he's well, pretty well known. Hilda Roach told him about me. Mm -hmm. I got a call from Reverend Stanley one day. He had been to San Francisco to a, to a conference of ministers, a congregation of ministers. And at this conference, the highlight of the conference, the Saturday afternoon, they had a, a jazz vesper service where they, where, they, where they did play all jazz and they opened the church up to uh, people off the street and everybody to come in. And, and, and uh, Rums, it was, a fantastic event for him. He was so impressed with that. He came back to Washington and said, I'm going to do the same thing. <laughs> he called me. Rev. Stanley called me and said, Phil, I'd like, you to, like to meet you and I'd like to have an uh, appointment with you. Can you come, come meet me at the church? Mm -hmm. I said, well, yeah. At that time, uh, I, I didn't belong to any particular church mm -hmm. at that time in, in Washington. I was a member of the church in, in, in Tampa, of course. But I had not joined in any particular church in Washington. Mm -hmm. So I, 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 I went up to People's Congregation Church on 13th Street. Mm -hmm. And uh, Reverend Stanley took me into this main sanctuary, and we sit on the front row. Mm -hmm. 
he said, the congregation's not going to like what I'm getting ready to do because they had a lot of old people mm -hmm. that, that, that sit in the traditional ways. You know. He said, but, but I, I'm going to bring jazz into this church. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm bringing it right to the main sanctuary right here. Yeah. I said, well, I say, well Reverend Stan, are you sure it's going to work? He said, trust me, it'll work, you know. So I, I, I started uh, the, the once a month mm -hmm. jazz vesper services wow. at, at People's Congregation Church. They still have them now, you know. Uh, we started a jazz society at People's. Did, did uh, you have a local band uh, with you? Or yeah, you yeah. In? No, I took my, 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 my group okay. in, in there. And uh, 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 through the jazz society that we performed, mm -hmm. thought that they came up with, with money. That's how I did my first, uh, my first four albums. Oh, wow. Was church. Were paid for jazz, by the church. Jazz at People's Church. Okay. I did a, 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 a Christmas jazz mm -hmm. at People's Church. Mm -hmm. I, I, I did a, 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 what I did a, a Gospel jazz jazz gospel CD. Mm -hmm. I have all these, these CDs that, I, and and the church will sell the CDs, mm -hmm. and they they sold real well. Yeah, sure. Matter of fact, uh, uh, CD Baby, which is an organization out of out of Portland, Oregon, mm -hmm. picked up uh, my CDs and they sold them all over the world. Yeah, you go. Those, those CDs were so yeah, <laughs> yeah, and, and uh, 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 I got uh, I got phone calls from Africa everywhere where people. Of playing, playing, playing with CDs. So I was really lucky with, mm -hmm. with that, you know. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, I still do the church services, jazz, jazz mm -hmm. at, at churches, with the eight piece group. The eight piece group I have uh, four rhythms, four in the rhythm section: the piano, bass, drums, guitar, mm -hmm. and then on four horns. Mm -hmm. I play trombone, trumpet, alto, and tenor saxophone. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the, the two vocalists we use is. Uh, well, we use full vocalists sometimes. Uh, Dick Smith, uh, which is a well-known vocalist. Sure, of course. Uh, uh, T.R. Day is another one. Gail Shipp and Bradley Thomas. Uh, we use four singers. Yeah, but sometimes, sometimes we use two, sometimes we use four. Mm -hmm. uh, now, uh, then, not only that group, we also have the big band. Mm -hmm. And uh, 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 how, that's, how the big band started, uh, there were two well-known musicians, David Yarbrough is one, mm -hmm. and uh, who's a good friend of mine, and Jock, Jock Johnson. Mm -hmm. Well, Jock Johnson's passed now. But the three of us got together and said, uh, uh, we like to put the big, big, band, big band together mm -hmm. for reading purposes, mm -hmm. because most jazz groups were just spontaneous jazz, mm -hmm. but uh, they say we don't get a chance to read in the charts anything mm -hmm. we do. So uh, my basement was big enough to start it. So the three of us started the big band. Oh, look at that. Yeah. In your basement? Yeah, in my basement. Where were you living Where in we see at the time? Yeah, on Missouri Avenue. On oh, Missouri Avenue? Yeah, yeah. Look at that. And uh, I, I, I have a four-unit apartment building, but the whole basement uh -huh. I use uh, for, for, for my music room. And uh, uh, we started that group, and we started doing con concerts. Mm -hmm. In that group, we had four saxophones, uh, Four rhythm section, three trumpets, three trombone, oh, wow. and two singers. You know, so that group, that group, the big band, will be performing uh, here, here at Westminster the night after Thanksgiving. Okay. We do that every year. We've done it for about, about the last six, seven years. Oh, beautiful. Uh, we, 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 you know, here at Westminster they have jazz mm -hmm. every Friday mm -hmm. from six to nine. They have the blues uh, mm -hmm. every Monday from six to nine, mm -hmm. and. Uh, 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 I have a blues group also, I, I, all the groups, I have a blues group called the Blues Brothers. Oh, and, and we perform, we, we, we just performed here Monday before last okay. uh, for the blues night. Now the big band is performing here the night of Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. Then my, the, the, the eight piece group will be performing here the Friday, bef mm -hmm. the Friday before uh, Christmas. Mm -hmm. we'll, we'll be doing Christmas jazz and regular jazz that night. So. Okay. so I, I'm still in the jazz with the big band and my jazz group, and then I'm still in rhythm and blues with the Blues Brothers, you well, know. The so, blues Brothers. See, so I have all all, all those. Got it all covered. Yeah, yeah. Got, got it all covered, you know. And what I like about the Blues Brothers, 
is uh, uh, whenever we perform here, I get a chance to play this big uh, Hammond organ. Ah, there you go. Yeah, they have a Hammond organ here, you know, mm -hmm. the big one. Yeah. And that, oh, that's, that's fun. Sounds playing. strong. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, with the Blues Brothers, I play the Hammond organ, yeah, yeah. So you, you feel comfortable in a church, playing in a church? Oh, yeah, yeah, we, we do. Uh, 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 I'll be back at Plymouth Church up on uh, uh, Capitol, North Capitol and Missouri Avenue. Mm -hmm. We were doing the, the Saturday, Christmas, we do Christmas Eve there every year. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, so I'll be performing there Christmas Eve at 2 o'clock in the evening. Yeah, so that's another performance, you know. Okay. So I, I've given you a, a, a You have a, a, a whole lot of, of things, yeah. I'm yeah. really excited. I, I don't know if I, I don't, I'm trying to see if I've missed anything that would be really important, but I don't know Well, if I, again, I would love to kind of talk about your experiences living in D.C., you know, having a, a you know a family in D.C., watching D.C. change, right? Cause yeah. You can well, just look out this window and, and see buildings. Well, I've seen change. Well, 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 well uh, I, I love living in D.C. Uh, uh, Why? Why do you living, love living in D.C.? Yeah. Well, well, well. So many great musical musicians are here in D.C. Mm -hmm. that, that are my very, very close friends, mm -hmm. and uh, I like the. The guys in the big band, they're all well-known musicians. Mm -hmm. And uh, as far as the music is concerned, they're good sight readers. They read the music real mm -hmm. easy. We have, like, uh, for, for the Friday night performance next week, we have, like, like rehearsal Tuesday. Mm -hmm. And we'll put together the whole performance just now because the guys read the music sure, real well. Sure. Where do you rehearse? In my basement. Oh, yeah, your yeah. basement. <laughs> okay. and, but, but, uh, 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 uh in all my in all my teaching, uh, like especially at UDC, uh, all my students still flock to me now. Oh, you know, they, we're still very very close friends. And uh, I, I would always tell my students to 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 find some kind of diversion other than music. Mm -hmm. uh, well, which I have found in DC, I'm a very good sports person. Okay, uh, I had season tickets to the Washington when with the Redskins then for like thirty some years. I gave them up about three years ago. Okay. Uh I play golf. Uh what do you what do you play in the city? Do you go out to Langston? Yeah, I play Langston quite often. I play now I play the easy course now up at Paint Branch. Okay. But I, I play golf uh in, in, in good good weather I play golf to, maybe twice a week. Oh, that's great. I have a golf group that that plays a lot. Oh beautiful. Uh, I have a poker group. Poker? That, that plays poker uh, uh, twice a month. Cash poker? Yeah, twice a month. I yeah. might have to join you. Oh, I wish you could. We, we <laughs> well, just, we maybe just, we talk about off camera. <laughs> we, just played, we just played last night. We played twice a month. Look at that. In my great. house. Yeah, yeah, are yeah. these also jazz musicians or these are just no, friends? No, no, no. These are just friends of just mine friends. who just love to play poker. Yeah. Okay. It, 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 we don't play for a lot of money now. Gotcha. Uh, yeah. And, uh, 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 we just play two dollar limit. That's yeah, all. Just to have fun. Yeah, yeah, just to have fun. Yeah, yep. we 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 start at five o'clock. We stop at at eight and eat at eight, uh -huh. and then we we play from eight thirty until twelve o'clock. Oh, you know, so from five to twelve, twice. So yeah, I think you would enjoy it. I'm glad I'm glad you said that. Fair uh, the other thing, uh, I don't do it anymore, but but for years I was uh, a member of a bowling group. I used to bowl every Wednesday. Oh wow. Yeah, over, over, over uh, on Blazeway Road, okay. at, at uh, 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 I forget the name of the bowling alley, Riggs Plaza, yeah, mm -hmm. uh, bowling alley, yeah. But I don't, I, I, I haven't bowled in the last year. But uh, so I, I have a lot of diversions, other than, other than music, you know. And so that kind of balances, kind of balances my life out, you know, with everything, you know. So good. I like to eat out a lot. I like to eat out at restaurants. I go out quite often. Where are some of your special eat, places in DC? Eat twice a week. Oh, we got we got a lot of, a lot of. I can name a whole lot of restaurants. <laughs> I go to I go. Well, Outback is one. Uh, Passion Fin, is a Japanese uh -huh. uh, place. Uh, uh, of course, I, of course, I go to IHOP for breakfast a lot. Okay. So I, I uh, Clyde's, you know, yep. all those places. Yeah. Yep. Have you performed at all recently on the in the new DC? So down on the water or the wharf? Have, have you kind of seen that that side of DC? I haven't. Not I, too far from here. No, no. I, I have. I did. Uh, uh, 
for Reverend Hamilton, who's who who hired me. I, I did a couple of the summer concerts on the uh, uh, down at the waterfront. Yeah, I did. I did those the last year, but uh, uh, I haven't performed at, at, on the, at the waterfront. Okay. You know, no. Okay. Okay. What but, do you think of of, of the that part of DC and that those changes down there? Oh, it's quite 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 amazing the way that things have changed. Uh, I, I've done quite a few performances out at uh, the harbor, mm -hmm. at, at, the, at the hotel at the harbor. Yeah, National Harbor. Yeah, I, I performed there quite a few times too. Yeah, for private groups, of course. Sure, you know, sure, yeah. sure. But other than that, uh, 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 I perform just not as much as I used to, but, mm -hmm. but I'm doing, still doing some things, you know. Okay. You referenced earlier at, at one point uh, that transition, and I, I just want to go back a little bit because I, I, I found it interesting. Uh, only six people in, in that band, a 90-piece band, right? Uh, the the uh, Air Force band? Yeah, band, yeah, band. right, right. And, and I'm thinking that at certain points you were probably one of the only other African American in, in, you know, in certain parts of your life. How has that impacted you? And, and well, how it? you know, it, it, uh, I, it's funny. Funny thing, I uh, had 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 quite an experience when I came to the Air Force Band. With the, it was six of us, I think it was, and the other five. They were they were they were good musicians too. Mm -hmm. But uh, but they at the beginning. They. They didn't think I was going to succeed as I did. Okay. And I, and why, I never, why do you think you were successful? I, I never listened. I never listened to. I, I don't know. I don't know what relationship they had with Captain Gall. Okay. Captain Gall, who was in charge, was not a musician. Okay. He was just an administrator. Gotcha. Yeah, Sig Norman, the guy who the place I took was the head musician of the group. Mm -hmm. That's the place that I took. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know what relationship they had with Captain Gall, but but I, I I never listened to things like that. I. I I'm my own person, yep. and, and my relationship with Captain Gall was perfect. <laughs> and, and, and when he called me in and told me I would be the conductor of the Air Force Band that I was with, it was quite was quite shocking, you know. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so I got a chance. We performed in places that had never seen any black people. Had, had never seen black people. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I, I know we performed. Uh, was way up, way up state, upstate New York. Well, there were no blacks in this. We did a parade up there and all. And and uh, I think we were. These, these people had never even been around any, any mm -hmm. blacks at all. So so I, I had that experience. I had to go through that experience and all mm -hmm. quite a bit. But I handled it pretty good. I'm sure know? you did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> any final thoughts as we wrap up? Uh, well, I'm glad you, I got a chance to talk. I hope I didn't. Didn't, didn't, didn't say too much. No, no, this, this is perfect, perfect. Uh, yeah. I'm thinking uh, you, you live in, is that Brightwood or Petworth, D.C., uh, off Missouri? What, what section is that? Petworth? Uh, no, that's not Petworth. Not Petworth anymore. It's Brightwood? Is it called Brightwood? Or uh, I'm not sure. What is it called? I don't know what that section is, but I'm, I'm, I'm on Missouri Avenue, Missouri Avenue between, between North Capitol and Kansas. Okay, North yeah. Capitol Kansas. So I think that's probably the edge of Brightwood almost. Yeah, right, right, right. right the edge right, of Brightwood. Right. Okay. And, 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 you know, if we can just maybe talk about gentrification a little bit, maybe D.C. About, kind of, uh, being gentrified, kind of changing. Do you have any thoughts on that? Yeah, uh, uh, I'm into politics. I, I mean, I, I, I observe politics quite a bit in D.C. And uh, uh, I'm a supporter of, of Mayor Browder, uh, Muriel, I support her quite, quite a bit. I was glad she won re-election again. She's our current mayor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Her third yeah. term. She's yeah, about to. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and and uh, uh but uh, I have seen so many changes, especially now. Uh, like Vernon, right I was just riding around. Uh, see all the apartment buildings going up everywhere. Everywhere. And they're so expensive. <laughs> I, I looked at some, look, look at the sign uh, on the apartments going up on Riggs Road in South Dakota Avenue, and they say it's starting at eight hundred, starting at seven hundred dollars. You know, kind of the condos, you know, and and, and it seemed like the condos about the about the 
the size of a, my living room. Sure, fair <laughs> enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not your basement, but your it's living starting room. at seven hundred thousand. I said, good gracious. But their apartments to build is just going. GC is really, really, really growing, you know. Sure. But I love it, you know. I love it here, you know. And, and you know, clearly that brings an audience for, for for the jazz. Yeah, right, 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 right. Well, thank you, sir. We appreciate yeah, your we, time. We, thanks for inviting and, me, and, and I hope uh, I hope I hope what I've said has been some kind no, of benefit. Amazing. You know, it's been amazing. Thank you. Now, will you edit out? Uh,